This presentation is more about showing the most varied images of Melbourne that hopefully has been gathered on YouTube or the internet. But I re will read out my hypothesis on the uh, Tatra civilization. Uh, I believe I have a theory or hypothesis on the culture, language, dates, and um, and they were in definitely in Victoria, Victoria. So I'll read out my little bit. Looking through the passenger numbers, we see that only 1,727 ex-prisoners arrived in Melbourne from 1844 to 1849. Immigration numbers go up greatly when they write down the numbers in their red book. From 1849 to 1851, we have 23,000 immigrants. <clears throat> That's through Melbourne into Victoria. Uh, I think, yeah, we were Victoria in, in 1851. That's 300 passengers to a ship with 100 1,000 arriving from 1851 to 1861. That makes 10,000 a year and ships carry 300 passengers. So we need 33 ships a minimum a year for 10 years during the gold rush, which is also the American Civil War, I think the Anglo-French War. Uh, they've got to carve up Africa again and start the slave trade. And there's probably immigration to America and there's a very small population of white people. Uh, Melbourne, the name Melbourne isn't a baron or a lord's name. It's a Roman value and a magic of spells by science. Again, it's a code. I translate a born to be, say, border. And the names on the shops all down Collins Street and Burke Street have women on one side and men on the other, like Islamic or man women's business for the indigenous. And Wa had a area as being a boundary, I'd say, for Wa, but that name was altered to be Ward, and the D would be something for using Wa for destruction or War for destruction and using Wa for Ward. I'm not sure, but D. Um, anyway, the trickster god, that's Wa, that's Wa. But what a bungle, that's a wild one. Uh, but we had an aeroplane here, so Mob got airborne and photographers flew in it too. So that's true. There's probably an aeroplane here when this civilization was here, and that's why Bunjil is popular in certain areas in Australia and popular also the eagle and popular in Egypt. I don't believe the indigenous people lived outside in the bush. The suburbs are all in their languages, so it makes sense it's a country, not suburb, and city is actually the Kulin Nation. Those homes, they are all built and owned by the citizens of the Kulin. They themselves, this civilization, work for the prince as one people, still living culture daily and with the added theatre nights to perform cultural displays, watch other culture while engaging in the production for free and alcohol-free country. It's Arabic, remember? So the pictures look so composed, I see, of the indigenous in traditional or in the indigenous pose as opposed to the European or Tartorian Victorian clothes. But anyway, the pictures look composed to me now. And I have a pedigree as a press photographer with our news limited background and old Fairfax background with three years paparazzi in London with big pictures in Alpha. So I feel these people in, in the photographs I've got are one civilization with a pronunciation of uh, cha cha, like cha cha, cha cha. And uh, whoa, pronunciation uh, for their code. I'll start again. So I feel these people in my photographs are one civilization with a pronunciation of cha cha. Their code or spell they write above their door to keep evil away is written, say, dot, which I think is zero in Arabic. I is one or I, so dot one, I dot six, eight, I dot, dot, I dot six, eight, I dot. My guess is Arabic numeral values in the abjab, ajab, principal belief, while it's the Holy Roman Catholic Church running this shenanigan as science defies God. So 
numer- Arabic numeral values to the letters above the doors, yet we see 1681 and the powers of B set of Roman numerals that is a code for them to probably reset, as we say. Yeah, my guess is that. Well, it's the Holy Word, is it? So to jump right in, white people are depicted in the Bible as white, but white is an error. The melanin or the melanone is in our hair that we have shed. Or we can work in the sun, warm up, feel good and get melanin again and charge the pineal gland up. What I worked out is science got out of control and the rest is history. But my story is we are three to four generations in from our old world Australian family. So fair-skinned children are taken from what was to be named Aboriginal people as it is now stolen generation. And I'm betting a lot of grandmothers, this is Anglo or white grandmothers in the 19th century would have kept quiet about adoptions of children and maybe they still do as my mum's dad is adopted and mum never found out till he passed away so he probably never knew. I call the culprit science, particularly photographers and lithiographers because I've done this sort of stuff in the media. They wrote all the signs on other people's property on negatives for our history because it is a non-existent population of Milton's without the old world Victor Tertorians to be on the census as Mediterranean immigration. So we just put them on as immigration and took their civilization, and they were cool because they'd probably been living here for 200 years. So the Tertorians will be on the census as Mediterranean immigration. This is a little deep, but here goes. Over the hundreds of years, white people were manufactured it's all, and they also made West Africans, East Africans, Indians and Aboriginals all here in the gates of hell. Like the New World ripped Tata up into quarters and scattered the language, the lineage, the knowledge, the temperance to the four quarters of the earth. This country had royalty with knights of chivalry adorning their heraldry, just like we do now with everything materialistic or bought in this capitalistic civilization. I believe in work, but no money, so no set hours, no bosses or management. Management just pose in pics or get people doing work for their pictures, the picture that never lies. I'm sure they were using electricity from the heavens and also from vibration or something, low voltage, high amp. It would have been at Spencer Street and Flinders Street. We also had Brunel seven and a quarter gauge track, this broad gauge track to Echuca and Ballarat via Geelong. That's like a bedroom on rails. Melbourne was not the hub, so activities like the King might travel from Seymour to Albury and doesn't build a bridge down to Melbourne. He doesn't need to go there. Um, yeah. And we all travel behind in the luncheon carriages having a great day as the, as the King's flying down the tracks, hooting his horn on the train he built. Yeah, so all the steam locos were built when we got here and we waited for the US to market or advertise brainwash us all. So they had all the steam locos, everything built, just release it with advertising, pack of cigarettes with your with your train. You know, remember dates. So it all so uh, see all the steam blah, 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 blah. Remember, no dates. So there's no date. So it's all about keeping us bogged down in digits. 1851 is a good date. It's the first world expo at Crystal Palace with a huge turnout when the sketcher arrives, but sending a photographer to a vent that has only five white Anglo models to show off the great raw British Anglo race. Where are the numbers for Dutch, French, German, Swedish, white people? And what of the flood and fire? How many died? Quick numbers here. 500,000 mums in 1851 had 13 children, then seven children a generation later, then four children a generation later, then two children. So 1950, you only have two kids. So it's about 364 million kids. So I'm sure we got those numbers up pretty easily from the gates of hell. So I hope you've enjoyed this. See you later. If you look on this picture, you'll see the one just gone. It actually has Tatra written on it. Uh, There's a heraldry over this. Is uh, that's where they make coins. This is all the artwork. I think it's in North Melbourne that we looted. More of the looted artwork. That's the library or museum. 
This is all the artwork that we've looted. You can see all the horns in the background. That's for the third eye. These are all rocks, all making sculptures not in their image, so there's no vanity. That's how I would see it. So there's no vanity in anything here. There's Torah, Torah, Torah. Some of their art. There's a smart ass. He's crushing rocks. So this is just up in Coburg. These are these giant rocks. But I've got a little display here. So you can see the trolleys coming over. And I've got steps down there. And there's all little poles of rocks. So that's your great Tartarian civilization. That's the Eastern Freeway that we had. That's some technology with another lighthouse. That's a, a reservoir, Yan Yin, storage for the tech. I think this is all to do with water under pressure, driving turbines that were the prisons. And this is the prison, 1841. I don't think there's mud and everywhere. That's the prison. Dirty roads. I mean, what are they digging out there? What's the point of going underground and see what's on about this circular thing? There's actually a turbine. There it is there. It's a turbine similar to this in the National Gallery. And you can see in the, in the square it's blown out on that part there. You can see it's blown out, blown right out there. And that's meant to be 1922, but it's, there's no one there. That's not a microscope or a telescope. That's not a velodrome. That's an ear. That's a star city. That's Melbourne Uni. You can see the star. That's the layout. That's when the CIA was here. And the sports grounds. The Yarra. The way it was laid out. What a canal. There was a canal here that they got rid of. You can see all that's the 50s. Port Melbourne, Port Melbourne Canal. Public Library. Now these pictures. These are uh, 1850s, this stuff. Most of the pictures here are no later than 1888. 1860, and I'm calling 1847 on pictures here because the newspaper didn't start till 1847. And I've got pictures of the Argus. I've got all sorts of pictures here. I'll release stuff. But I just wanted to get all these beautiful images out. As you can see where the canal is. There's Melbourne. And that's what I can't remember the lake being so long. Lakeside Oval. Thank you. Bye.